taxes, keeping my book straight, running a profit and loss statement, it all gets so confusing. I used to spend more time trying to worry about my taxes and if I'm doing them right than I actually did working on my business. I needed a solution. That is when I found Core Financial. Core is a team of tax professionals that actually care about real relationships with their clients. From the moment I hired Core, I was able to trust that I would be fully taken care of. They run my books, keep me up to date with my finances, and make sure I'm taking full advantage of all the tax breaks I qualify for. Are you struggling to understand your finances? Do you need help making sure you don't make any mistakes? Look no further. Core Financial. Both Nick and I are huge fans of Core Financial, and we know you will be too. Check out howtofilmweddings.com slash core to see what they can do for you. Core Financial. Real relationships. No surprises. And John, I have a simple question for you, but it's very, it's very heavy. And it is this. Should I ever give back my retainer? What do you think? Ugh. That is a very heavy, hard question to answer. Welcome to the How to Film Weddings podcast. My name is John Bunn. I'm joined today by my best good buddy, Mr. Nick Miller. Nick, how are you doing, my friend? What's new in your world? Hey, I am doing really, really well. Um, the uh, the world is is crazy, um, as it has been for the last couple of months, but I'm thankful that school is about done. I can quit um, helping out with the homeschooling, um, ready, ready for, for summer break. Um, even though we've kind of been in summer break for the last, you know, month and a half or, or whatever it is, but, um, no, we are, we are doing, doing really good. How about, how about you and you guys? We're good. We, uh, have slowly started like seeing a little bit of family from, you know, from a distance, uh, mm-hmm. seeing real people in real life. Um, my daughter's school ended, you know, this week as we're recording. And so today was actually the first day where we didn't have to set an alarm and get her up to do school online. Yeah. And so, yeah, man, I mean, it's been really weird, you know, it's Definitely. like, I think a month away from my first scheduled wedding coming up and I don't know if we're going to have it. I've had so many things canceled or removed or, and I know all of us are kind of out there just wondering what the world is going to do and what we're going to do. And so, you know, as Nick and I were kind of talking about, um, what we want to chat about, you know, we were just talking about like what the world looks like now, COVID-19 during this pandemic, post pandemic, and just wanted to have an open conversation about kind of what we're doing, what we've been up to and what we plan to do moving forward, and also just some of the steps we took beforehand that have really saved our butts. So that's kind of the idea for today's mm-hmm. episode, and I'm really excited to get into it. That's that's yeah. what's new with me, my man. That's what's yeah. new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. We have um, we know that we haven't had many podcasts lately with just me and John, so we thought it would be a, uh, a good idea for us to just sit down and, and have a conversation about what's what's been going on in our world um, for, for the wedding, wedding industry with COVID-19 and all of that. So, um, let's just kind of go ahead and jump in, in and start talking about this. So where, okay, let, let's, let's rewind to, let's say February, how many weddings did you have on the books? And yep. then whenever this happened, how many have like shifted and moved? Have you had any outright cancel? How many have been pushed to 2021? You know, kind of just kind of share share where you are with that. Yeah, I'm going to pull up my spreadsheet. So, yeah, Feb- March 14th, I actually filmed a wedding in this, you know. Uh, Me too. In, Me too. In, yeah, in Oklahoma, like I think the 11th was whenever like the Oklahoma City Thunder canceled a game because somebody had... Um, you know, coronavirus and like the whole world at that point kind of seemed in America, at least maybe not the whole world was like, it was, uh Oh, we're going to stop. It was like no one in the United States was taking it seriously. And then in the same day that happened in the NBA and it came out that Tom Hanks and his wife caught it. And it was yeah. like, at that moment, that's whenever the world, the United States was like, Oh, okay. Maybe this is serious. Yeah. If Tom Hanks has it and the NBA <laughs> is shutting down. Like, 
Yeah. And, and so like that weekend, I remember wondering if we were going to have a wedding and that was our first mm-hmm. wedding of the season. Um, and at that point we had 19 weddings booked. And I will say that, you know, one of the benefits of being a more boutique studio without, you know, volume, without a ton of volume has been very beneficial to us to, to have room later in the year to move things, you know? Mm-hmm. And so like, Once that wedding, though, was over, I was, you know, I I didn't have anything scheduled until May. And so I just thought, well, all of this will probably be, you know, I didn't know what to think. It's like this will be gone by May. And so to answer your question, um, we are down to 18 weddings now. We had uh, a bride move her wedding day to a day that I was double booked already. And so um, she didn't want to have another lead shooter besides me. And so she and I, you know, parted ways. So I'm down one, but I've moved um, of the weddings, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them um, to later in the year that were going to happen in May and in June. And so I still have a few in June that are staying, but every like my August was completely open. And now I have three weddings in August, Mm -hmm. uh, three in September and like five in October, one of those being like my birthday weekend. And so like, I usually don't book that out. And so, um, you know, it's been really weird because, you know, my wife and I, Heather, we talked and it's just like, we're going to not have a normal year. Like we're not going to be able to plan a vacation like we could. I mean, we're still going to like, we don't know when we could go anywhere. Uh, Mm -hmm. This June is her and I 15 year wedding anniversary. So like we were planning, doing something big and going somewhere and it's just like, well, we can't do that now. And a wedding got moved to that. And so, yeah, it, it really like has been surreal in the fact that everything has changed and nothing has changed. Like I wasn't supposed to shoot a wedding until May 16th, which is, you know, um, as we're recording this, this week. And so, um, you know, (laughs) nothing's literally changed yet until this weekend, whenever it's like, Oh, I'm not going to be shooting this weekend. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, yeah, it's it's been insane. How about you? What's changed for you? Yeah, so um, in we shot our first wedding at the very end of February for the year, and um, with that one included, we were sitting at eighteen, I believe. And then um, we shot one, um, you know, that same weekend that you did. Uh, thankfully, um, it, it it was an elopement, and so it was very small, and so that's been kind of interesting. A lot of people, that's really resonated with them, so so they can see, oh, I can't have my big wedding, uh, you know, now it's it's kind of crap, you know, I had this thing, but we're able to show this this piece of something small and intimate that um, has resonated with a bunch of people, but um, we had um, one in April that was um, postponed. Um, that one doesn't have a date yet. It was our biggest booking ever. And so I kind of made a deal with her and I had her sign a new contract, um, that said, uh, you know, you have paid everything in full. You don't get anything back, but you have 24 months to replan your wedding. The only stipulation is, is that we're available. And so, Mm -hmm. um, so she has 24 months, uh, to, to do, to do that one. Um, we had three in September, I'm, I'm sorry, three in May. All of those were pushed back. We had the first weekend in June was pushed back. Um, One we have, so our next one is going to be June 13th. And um, in the state of Kansas, yeah, in the state of Kansas anyways, um, the um, crowds that don't have to observe social distancing are supposed to be at 90 um, in uh, June 13th, at least that's the the plan for right now. Uh, so we're, she emailed me yesterday and said, we are moving forward as planned. So we'll just see how that goes. Um, I was really, I was really looking forward to being done for my year, November 7th. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I've, I've always wanted to take all of December off, you know, it was kind of Christmas and just be with family and stuff, but haven't been able to do that. Um, we had one wedding rescheduled to the end of November. Uh, so I still haven't gotten into December yet, but, um, you know, I was really, before all this started, I was like 20 is where I want to be this year, but now I think I'm open to maybe doing a couple more. Um, thankfully 
the big thing is I looked at my calendar earlier in the year. Um, it was like we had three in May and we had two in June and we had two in July and we had one in September and two in October, you know, like everything was really spaced out. So we have actually have a bunch of available weekends, which I am very, very thankful for, Mm -hmm. you know, hearing these studios that are shooting 50 to a hundred plus a year and like they're wrecked right now. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just really glad that we were able to, um, you know, adjust, adjust from that. So. Yeah. And I think a lot of people out there, you know, it's, you know, I, I said this, I think on someone else's podcast and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but you know, I've heard the saying that when the tide goes out, you can tell who's skinny dipping, you know? And it's like, um, if you didn't set yourself up, you know, or if you were building your business and hadn't had a chance to set up, you know, some fail safe, you know, emergency mm-hmm. funds and things like that, some of you out there are in a like a world of hurt and like you're mm-hmm. depressed. I've talked to lots of people that are just like, I went through like two weeks of just straight up depression and I was mm-hmm. just, and you know, one of the main reasons we wanted to start this community, to be honest, was to be there for people yeah, because, for sure. you know, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs have some of the highest depression ratings, you know, like because we have it's hard. super highs and super lows, you know, and yeah. when you think you're going to be having a six figure year and all of a sudden half of that goes away in a month and you're, you know, stuck where you can't work and things like that, you know, we don't have the right answer for you, but we also just want you to know we're here for you, you know, and that's mm-hmm. what like our Facebook group and, um, you know, just the messages and things that, you know, that's why we created that community is so we could all wrap our arms around each other. And I think it's been very interesting inside of our Facebook group. We've had to delete a handful of posts, but for the most part, you know, we're all wound up. We're all at home all the time. There's a lot of articles floating around about what the government should do and shouldn't do. And this is not a political uh, podcast by any means, and neither is our group, but like we all just need to breathe a little bit. Like, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's going to be okay. We're going to make it through it. We are going to get to the other side of it. And we just mm-hmm. wanted to be a voice of encouragement, kind of let you know some of the things we've been doing um, to prepare some of the things that we're doing now and some of the things we're looking at doing, you know, moving forward. Now, I want to ask you, Nick, did you, mm-hmm. um, when it came to your contracts and everything, mm-hmm. did you end up getting any type of provisions added to your contract regarding COVID-19? Have you changed any of that stuff? Um, are you kind of just case by case? Where are you at? Yeah. So, uh, definitely whenever this all, all went down, I think early, like early on, whenever, um, you know, back in March we had Paige Hulse on the podcast. Um, you know, she's our attorney that we highly recommend and we think that she uh, not only does great work, but is a great person. And so I reached out to her and, uh, got one of her, um, template contracts that she has on her website. And there is some COVID-19 provisions in there, um, that, um, you know, she, she says, you know, this, I am a lawyer. I write this, but you need to run this by a lawyer in your state. Um, you know, just to read over it, to make sure that it fits Um, my dad, um, who lives in Colorado now, but, um, you know, was licensed in Kansas and Missouri for, you know, the last 20 years minus the last two. So he read over it and he knows, you know, Kansas laws and stuff. So he was, um, he was, he was good with it. So, uh, yeah. went forward with that. Um, and you know, it's, it's really extensive and really detailed. I mean, if you printed it on Microsoft word, it'd probably be somewhere between seven and 10 pages. Like, I mean, it's, it's pretty long, but, um, your contract you know, or the, the, additions? the contract, the contract. Okay, yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, you know, and, but it, it's detailed and, uh, you know, the contract should protect you as the videographer as much as possible. And there's provisions in there about, you know, retainer and cancellations. And then, you know, she added in a line about, uh, pandemics, you know, happening and, mm-hmm. and that, that sort of stuff. So highly recommend that. And obviously, you know, if you send that over to uh, your client and they, don't like a line or they won't, you know, whatever you can, you know, negotiate with them and talk with them and maybe change that up a little bit. But uh, I think it's a good starting point um, in there for sure. Yeah. And for us, um, just as a side note, if anyone out there is still needing some kind of help, you know, we a hundred percent recommend not trying to figure this out on your own, hiring a professional in your area. I do know, you know, like with Paige Hulse, she has on our website, howtofilmweddings.com slash law. 
Um, all of her stuff for COVID-19 is right there. We try to make it easy. Mm -hmm. uh, the promo code, I believe, is HTFW. gets you, I think, 10% off of their the things. But There's some sort the, of discount. Yeah, they're, they're there. And then also, I know HoneyBook created a few things. Um, yeah. that are free resources. There's there's some free resources out there to kind of grab, but then adding them to your contract, having your lawyer or having someone like Paige, like look it over based on mm -hmm. your state, that's going to be huge for you. So, um, you know, it, it's one of those things where like it, it has changed the world in the way we're going to move forward. Definitely. And so, you know, I'm just so happy, you know, and we've preached so long on this podcast just about like having contracts correct for you and for your state. And so like by having that contract, I have had to, you know, I've had to have some difficult conversations sure. with people, but at the same time, it has given me the freedom to know that I'm covered and that I'm safe. And mm -hmm. so now is not a bad time if you don't have a solid contract to like, it's actually the best time. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's Definitely. it's been really great to be able to, to look at that and, and all that and moving forward, know that I'm safe and protected. I also... Um, have, the, you know, I, I downloaded and purchased pages, um, revisions and everything like that. And I've been, you know, for us, what we did, we reached out to each one of our couples that are coming up kind of one by one. And we talked about this a little before, but, and just said, Hey, we're thinking about you. We're empathetic towards you. We didn't say it like that, but we're empathetic. We know that you're going through a lot. Mm -hmm. Here's our stance on it. Here's where yeah. we stand. And so to each their own, but you know, we kind of let them know if it's legal for us to be there, we will be there. Um, we're willing to move your date yep. with no fee. If it's within this calendar year, um, there will be a fee if it moves to next year. That's what we did. And, and can I, can I interrupt you yeah. there really quick? Yeah. Um, I know that this is kind of a hot topic in lots of other groups that I've seen of, you know, rescheduling and, you know, are you charging fees? Are you not charging fees? I think the answer is you need to do what is best for you and your business and how you feel. Um, some of you are hearing that John is charging a rescheduling fee to move into 2021, and you might be appalled about that because COVID-19 isn't your bride's fault. It's not fair to her to charge more money because of this. That's okay. You don't have to do that. I know of some people that regardless of COVID-19, they are doing a reschedule fee date. Okay. Okay. It, do what I do that? No, but I don't think that that's wrong if that's how you want to run your business and all that stuff. So um, whether you're charging fee or not charging a fee, it's totally okay. It's it's 100% your decision, but you should be, uh, I, I guess you should be thinking about the consequences and repercussions of both. OK, if you're yeah. charging a rescheduling fee for some time next year, there is a possibility that you know, there's going to be some backlash. If you're not, if you're not doing any rescheduling fee for next year, um, then what's going to happen whenever 10 of your weddings move to next year and now you're not getting any more money for that. So just yeah. be mindful and be cautious moving forward with that. And sorry so, to interrupt you. you. No, I think it's a really valid point because at, at the same time, like I've had one couple say, well, what if we move to October of next year? You know, they're in October of this year. They're not moving mm -hmm. anything yet. And as we get closer to the next year, I'm going to go case by case. But like if they will move it to a day that's a non-prime wedding day, um, I may be willing to just say, you know what, we're not going to charge a rescheduling fee for a Friday or, you know, and when I explained, okay, you know, like to the bride, hey, your wedding's October 21st this year. If you do it October 22nd next year, October is every year completely booked for me. So mm -hmm. I'm literally going to take a ten to $15,000 hit because you're booking two days and it's not your fault. It's mm -hmm. not my fault, but it's just what it is. And so... Mm -hmm. I will work with you and try to treat you like you're my daughter or, you know, somebody I know, a friend. Sure. But you have to be willing to work with me that, like, I can't block off a Saturday in these prime months. Now, if you want to move to February of 2021, I might be, you know, and so it's different per. Yeah. I'm not, like, making a big announcement, like, this is what I'm doing and, like, causing this uproar. It's it's one by one, case by case. And when it came down to it, like, I care about the clients that we've booked and I'm like, if they're going to be just completely frustrated about it, I'm probably going to try to work with them somehow or another. But like, mm -hmm. that's just me. I, I, 
for what it's worth, the relationships that we've built, everyone is 100% on board saying, absolutely, we get it, um, you know, whatever you need to do. So Yeah. Uh, one, one thing I also wanted to point out, we had one wedding move from May 20 to May of 2021. And, you know, this is a, a couple, there was our very first one that just wanted to reschedule and move. And so I did not charge a fee. Here's something that I think that a lot of us maybe like psychologically can't get over. You move one couple for free. So now you're automatically thinking that you have to move all of your other couples for free. Guess yeah. what? You don't have to do that. <laughs> Okay. Like you can move one. And then if a bunch of people start moving to the next year, you're like, Whoa, now my entire year is getting booked up with people that paid me in 20 and I'm not going to make any money in 2021. So you should at least be compensated a little bit for that. Have a $500 or a thousand dollar reschedule fee or, you know, whatever you are comfortable with, but it is okay to not charge the first person or the first few people to do that, but then charge later on whenever you kind of see how this is all playing out and you see how the schedule is going. Yeah. And when it comes down to it, it's not their fault, but it's not my fault. And, mm -hmm. you know, with the way my contract is written, mm -hmm. um, they can pick a day that I'm not currently booked or, you know, they can move it based on, you know, my contract. And if they don't want to, you know, like, like, it, when it comes down to it, it's like, I'm going to take care of me and my business first. Like I have yeah. to, because my family and you know, my livelihood is more important than them being upset or not at me. And legally they've signed a contract saying that they're going to follow like the, like in, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't lead with that ever, <laughs> ever, <laughs> but I would, you know, caution you. Like I, there's been a lot of talk and we're getting to this later just about, you know, whether or not to return money or retainers or things. And it's just like, you have to really know your numbers, know what's important to you and mm -hmm. what you're willing to fight for and not fight for. Because yeah. everyone is just kind of running around like the house is on fire. Like, what do we do? And and so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's definitely, um, you know, worth really having a talk with your business partners or your spouses or your friends or like, your, your mentors and saying, what do you think I should do? How should I handle this? So, um, but yeah, for me, I've moved a lot of days. They've all been moved to later in this year. They all get yeah, it. Great. The conversations I've had with my wife are, Hey, you know, I, I space it out usually, but it's going to be June, you know, June, if we get back to work is going to be really busy. July had no weddings. We were planning family vacation and I've got three weddings now, but mm -hmm. this is what I need to do this year. And yeah, you know, I'm getting three months at home from March, April, and May. Like, yeah, I, yeah. they're not think how I wanted way. them to be, but, you know, and people I think are acting like, you know, they, this is going to be the reality forever that we're right. going to be extra busy. Like, and it comes down to it. It's okay just to realize that like this sucks and it, it will be a potentially stressful season but we mm -hmm. will get on the other side of this and we will get yep. back to, you know, back to normal, back to the, the way things are going and or but they were going, you know, not normal, normal like it was. But like we will get back to some type of homeostasis be, be, yes. where, yes, we're, <laughs> where it's like getting back to that. So, yeah. 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 So uh, in, in short, you know, um, our, our both of our years, just like all of you listeners have been. Um, changed a little bit. We're having to tweak things. Um, hopefully, uh, you're going to come through, um, you know, well and okay and, and get everything all figured out. Uh, if you don't have a contract or you don't have one that has COVID-19 language in it, highly recommend uh, Pages Store. So check that out. We have some more things we're going to talk about. And we'll definitely get to those after this break. So tell me, what CRM do you use? If you're not sure or you don't know what a CRM is, I'm about to save you a lot of time and therefore money. CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management. Basically, a CRM is an online service that helps you better serve your clients. HoneyBook is both mine and John's CRM of choice. We absolutely love it. HoneyBook allows us to do all of our correspondence, contracts, and payments all in one place. One of the features that I love is the automated workflow. We all have emails that we send out to all of our clients, right? At six months, three months, one month, the week of, all of us do it. Automated workflows make it so that those emails can go out automatically. Since I don't have to take time to one, 
remember to send them out. And two, to write them, I save time and make more money by working more efficiently. Are you interested in saving time on the business side of things? Go to howtofilmweddings.com slash honeybook for a free one week trial. Also, because the HoneyBooks really like me and John, we can give you $200 off of your first year, and that also comes with a 60-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Go to howtofilmweddings.com slash HoneyBook to start saving lots of time in your business. Oh yeah, legally I have to tell you that John and I are affiliates of HoneyBook. All right, we are back from break. So we're talking about world after COVID-19 uh, kind of things. And so one of the things that I wanted to shift the conversation on is talk a little bit about goal setting. Um, I know that, you know, January, February, you know, that's really big, you know, time for us to think about the year and the things that we want to accomplish. And, and then in 2020, March 15th hit and everyone's goals, everyone's life kind of just stopped, right? Um, we weren't worried about what was going to happen this year. We were worried about, am I going to be able to provide for my family tomorrow? Am I going to be able to pay my bills? Are we going to be able to eat? What's going to happen to my house? Those were the things that we were concerned with, okay? As of, you know, the date that we're recording this, you know, mid-May 2020, um, many states are starting to slowly reopen. Um, Kansas is in a plan, uh, a three-phase plan. Lots of Lots of states are doing, you know, three or four phase plans. Um, by mid-June, Kansas is supposed to be fully open again, all right, where no restrictions on anything. That's the, you know, that's the tentative plan. And so as we're thinking that the world is reopening and maybe your state is, you know, on that track, maybe it's a little bit different, I don't know, but I think it's a good thing for us to start making plans for the rest of the year. Are your goals, are you going to be able to accomplish the goals that you had set at the beginning of the year? Maybe not, because you're only going to have six months to accomplish them as opposed to 12. But I think it's really good, it's really healthy to be thinking of the future. We have all been kind of living in question or fear or just uncertainty. And so goals are not something that you, you're thinking about. So we wanted to take some time for you to sit down and kind of plan out and think about some goals for, for you know, the rest of the year. Um, and so take some time, sit down. What are some practicable, 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 <laughs> practical, yes, practicable, yes, practic practical, practical, goals applicable goals that you can accomplish for either yourself, your family, your business, so that you can have, you know, some reason to move forward. Because, you know, I've talked to some people and they're like, I live in California and we're shut down through at least the end of August now. You know, like your world is, is totally wrecked. And so what are things that you can start thinking about to motivate yourself to start moving forward? Yeah, I think too, a lot of us, you know, entrepreneurs that are out there, it's like we find our self worth a lot from accomplishing tasks and moving the needle forward and whatever you want to call it. But like, you know, my last wedding was March 14th. I have that edited and I'm all the way caught up. I don't have any weddings. Like for a while there, it's like, what am I going to do? Like, exactly. I can't go work. I can't go. And so like, I had to like really have a, you know, a come to Jesus meeting as we call it here in the South and like sit down <laughs> with my wife and just be like, okay, what are we going to do? How are we going to, you know, and we're in a little different situation since, you know, Nick and I have this podcast and course, you know, our course and products and, and things. And so you know, for me, I started thinking about like, what can I do with what's in my hand right now? Like, what can I, like, I can't go shoot a wedding. So what other goals, like, mm -hmm. should I be thinking about? Should I be thinking about goals with my branding and my website? Or does that make me any money right now? And is my, is my house on fire and I need to put that out first? Or And so yeah. like w encouraging you guys out there to look, like really audit your life and say like, what? what can I do right now? What can I set goals? Because if you don't have, you know, if I don't have something to be working on or doing like for about two weeks, I just kind of chilled at the house and kind of moped around and was like, well, and then sooner or later I felt like I just had a kick in the butt to like get going and mm -hmm. then like start mm -hmm. dreaming and think. 
And so like I just got a, a notepad out and started writing and started thinking of things, started ordering books online, started reading. And then it was just like, um, for me, I knew goal wise, like my video business was going to do what it, I mean, it's limited to what it can do. But like personally, I was like, you know what? I really want to start reading two books a month. And I really want to start, you know, putting my phone in my, you know, my bedroom when I get home or like my bedroom for a certain part of the day and just not look at it. And like I've become disgusted with how much I looked at my phone. And, you know, it's just like, the thief of my time and was just like, Mm -hmm. you know what, I'm going to set a goal to, you know, to have distance from my phone for hours at a time during my day. And and what that did for me is like, we turned on, you know, Pandora on our sound system in our living room and opened up the windows and like had face-to-face conversations with our spouse. You know, it's like, this is something like the goals I had was just to get back to a quieter, nor like, a quieter normal, a less busy. Like I don't want to go back into the crazy busyness that was what we were doing. And it's helped me to really slow down and, you know, stop and smell the roses. You know? yeah. So that's what I've been doing is sitting outside watching sunrises and sunsets and breathing in and, and a lot of other things. And we'll talk about those soon. But my goals for this year shifted towards how can I be the best me and how can I, you know, flourish in my relationships with people and and all of that that's where i transitioned to yeah over the last you know month um i've spent a lot of time with my family and my wife obviously because we're all at home together and i i think that a lot of people you know especially if you're married if you're in a relationship you know you kind of get into your ruts and you kind of get into you know i go to work and you know i do these kind of things and then whenever you're around your family all the time you're like like it comes kind of stressful or you know it can become difficult or whatever and uh my wife and i jen you know i think we've purposefully like okay let's pour you know our lives into each other more let let, let's continue to work on our relationship and i and i think that just the communication that we've been having the discussions that we've been having the time we've been spending together has been really really great for our business and so a goal that i have you know is to continue that kind of like what you're saying after our world opens up and we go back to quote unquote normal you know i know we don't know what that is but so that i have this foundation of spending time with her and being around her and giving her the attention she deserves and my children and you know that sort of stuff So uh, that that's a big, you know, kind of personal goal that I have. And then, um, you know, business wise, you know, just just keep use this. You know, if you want to look at it, you know, silver lining, use this gift of I had three months where I didn't have any weddings to edit, you know. So whenever I start back up, guess what my backlog is? It's at zero. So now I can maybe, you know, get videos back faster and, um, you know, work with the couples and, you know, do a better job. So, you know, a goal I have is, you know, I want that turnaround time to be, you know, three to five weeks. You know, that's my, that's my goal. And with how my weddings are spaced out, I think that that's definitely, you know, kind of possible. So, um, yeah, what else you got? I want to add, well, so like for me, um, I remember reading the book, rich dad, poor dad in 2003 Mm -hmm. when I was in college. And, um, you know, that is before a lot of you guys were out of diapers, I'm sure, because I'm old, whatever. But uh, <laughs> like, I remember reading that book and it, one of the main premises is like, what's in your hand right now that you can use to make money and, and start getting ahead? And at that time, I had like a little handy cam that my mom had bought me for graduation or whatever the year before in high school. And I was just like, I've got this camera. I love video stuff like Maybe I can film a graduation. My younger brother was graduating the next year. Um, I started like just reaching out to people with this little crappy camera and started making money and started doing things with it. And that is what has led us to this point right here. Yeah. Is, you know, and um, I think about that and I think, you know, for me, I was like, we're going to look back at this time and this is going to be a defining moment for so many of us. Mm-hmm. Um if you take advantage of it. And so I would encourage you if you're out there, it's not too late to take advantage of this time for us, you know, with how to film weddings, um, with, um, everything that we're doing, it was like all of a sudden we had all of this extra time that we didn't think we were going to have to work on things that were in the future in the back of our minds or whatever. So once you get all your, 
your things caught up. You've checked all the boxes of things you were going to get to. You got your hard drives lined up and organized. You've sold all the raw footage you can to couples. You've done everything. It's just like, what is in your hand right now? It doesn't have to be a mm -hmm. camera, but maybe you love calligraphy or maybe you love whatever. And it's not like just start a business so you can make money, but like, what is, what is there in your hand that you can use to, to further yourself or, mm -hmm. you know, and for us, one of the things that we've really um, wanted to do, you know, and I hope it's okay. I talk about it, but like, um, no, what are you going to talk it's about? It's not okay. Not HT map. <laughs> yeah. um, one of the things we wanted to do was create another channel to help people that want to podcast. And so once, you know, we've had some success here with our podcast and it was like, a lot of people message us saying, what gear do you use? How do you um, record? You know, how do you get your quality to look like it looks? How do you? And it's like the same exact thing that was happening with how to film weddings started happening with people all around the world asking us how we're podcasting and how we get it to look and how we. Mm -hmm. And so Nick and I were just throwing the idea back and forth of like, is it like how to film weddings is killing it? We're doing some things right um, we obviously have a ways to go on things, but like when it comes down to it, it's like we've got episodes recorded for a long time. We had a bunch of episodes recorded. We had our course that was done. We had our posing guide that was out and, you know, we have all these ideas for products, but it was like, what if we spend the next six weeks just getting a new course ready for teaching people how to podcast? And so like behind the scenes, Nick and I from afar have written shot in all, like we're almost done shooting as as we record this something called the podcast blueprint which is a full teaching you know on everything we know about mm -hmm. how to make a podcast and so what's fun and since we're so literal it's you know how to film weddings and so we created a new brand um, called how to make a podcast and so um, we're teaching people and growing that and it's like that was something that we thought we would do in a few years, you know, and, and now it's like we were able to write out, you know, a six hour course and teaching everything we know from the gear we use to how we've made money doing it. And and I'm not saying that is like this big pitch to start a podcast, but it's like that has been something that has been super fulfilling in this crazy time. And mm -hmm. so like filling your time with something like that, I've read books on how to, you know, launch different courses, different ways. And I've read, you know, a book called the power of habit and like, just, I've, I've been reading and do it. And like, that's my encouragement to you is like, what personal things can you be working on? Um, you know, it's been so much fun and so great to like be producing another course with Nick. You know, we produced the complete wedding videography course last September, I think is when we shot it. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. so, you know, it's almost been a year. Um, and so I know it just came out in February, but like being able to record this now and, and build that channel while we're, you know, really diving in more to the how to film weddings group and all that, like all these things is building for this future for us instead of just sitting back and being like, well, I'm all caught up on edits. I don't have any money. I don't know what to do. Right. Like we're creating opportunities and that's what we recommend you do. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That, that, that's great advice. What do you have on hand that you can do? Um, whether it's a financial gain, which, you know, we're all for that making money, but also, you know, what can you do to keep you busy? What can you do to keep yourself sane? You know, maybe you really like to paint and you're not going to be able to sell your paintings for much money, but it just gives you enjoyment. It gives you something to keep your mind off of stuff and keep you occupied. That's, that's totally, totally okay. Um, you know, in, in COVID-19 quarantine, I'm staying a, at home all a, the time. It's like time. a blessing. It's like, yeah when do you ever get three months to just chill? And again, there are some people that are hearing that and say, oh, this is not a blessing. This has been awful for me. And you, there are people that we get that. We understand yeah. that. But yeah. I'm told, but I think the point is you can look at it that way. And John and I could be totally negative about our situations and about everything that's going on. But we have decided to what's something positive. What's what's some silver lining. What's something that we can do that's to good. make this time worth it. And again, it's all about perception. It's all about glass half full versus glass half empty, you know, that kind of stuff. So uh, take yeah. the time that you have and do something with it, whether that is going to, you know, 
benefit you financially, benefit your family, or just give you a peace of mind and give you something to do. Um, I mean, for some people that could be like playing video games, like whatever. I mean, don't neglect the things that you need to do, but if it's just a release of, of some enjoyment and that kind of stuff. So yeah. um, we are we are coming up on another break, um, but we have one, our question of the day last, left. We have our question of the day left, and I think it's a really good one. So we'll get into that right after this. Do you remember that wedding from a month ago? <laughs> yeah, like that one that you needed to start editing yesterday, but you also need to prep today for your wedding tomorrow and you're leaving for your first vacation in forever on Monday. So what do you do? It seems that the only creative part of your edits are the excuses you're going to have to give your clients. We have the solution, Weditor. Weditor is a team of top wedding editors, project managers, and account coordinators that help us wedding filmmakers edit. They match the right editors with your style so you can spend your time where it matters most, on your business. Nick and I both use Weditor and we don't know how we would run our companies without them. It takes a team to build an amazing business and you shouldn't try to do it all on your own. Head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash weditor to help you free up your time so that you can focus on growing your brand. Be sure to use promo code HTFW for $50 off your first project. Weditor, more than freelance, more than outsourcing. We know the time suck that is searching for the perfect song for your wedding film. Musicbed has spent years collaborating with artists, bands, and composers to make it easier than ever for anyone to find the right song for their video. With amazing artists like Chapters, Tony Anderson, and The Light, The Heat, Musicbed is the best place for wedding videographers to get licensed music. Their subscription service was a life changer for me, especially since all of their subscription music is pre-cleared for every social media platform Facebook, Instagram, Love Stories TV, and my personal favorite, YouTube, all pre-cleared. And if you are interested in a free month of a Musicbed wedding subscription, head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed. When you sign up, use the promo code HTFW and you will get your first month for free. And we're back from break, and now we're going to ask our question of the day presented by Weditor. Weditor, more than freelance, more than outsourcing. And John, I have a simple question for you, but it's very, it's very heavy. And it is this, should I ever give back my retainer? What do you think? Ugh. That is a very heavy, hard question to answer. That's what I um, said. Yeah. I'm going to say the, like, if you should ever give back a retainer, I'm going to say no. You should never give back a retainer, but... I have a small caveat to that because I do think that if you get caught in this game of giving back retainers, like you could really, really hurt the industry, Definitely. not just for videographers, but mm. for the entire industry. You know, you think about a florist or whatever, or an event planner. It's like, if you're giving back the retainer, they're going to expect their florist to do it. They're going to think. And so mm -hmm. like that could be detrimental. So I want to preface my answer and I want to hear what you have to say, Nick, too, by saying that I've never given back a retainer that I mm. remember or know of, at least in the last five or six years, uh, maybe back in the early, early days. I don't think I have, mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. um, I've never given back one and don't plan on giving one back, mm -hmm. but there mm -hmm. are a couple of scenarios with this pandemic that I would consider giving it back at a certain point. Mainly if I were in a scenario where, you know, I have a contract that is solid. I have a couple um, that wants their money back because they want a different day that I might not personally be available, but I could have a second shooter shoot. That could be a way, you know, like that could be something where it's like, it, it's a gray area. Like if they mm -hmm. wanted me to be there since I do offer, you know, a second team a few times a year, but they were like, I really want you to be there. Like if they were really awesome about it and kind, I would con maybe consider it, but I still think I would tell them no. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other scenario is if I had a retain, like a couple that wanted to move the day, wanted to cancel with me, was being terrible, like just hateful, hard to work with. And if my retainer was a small enough amount where it wasn't worth the time, but I mm -hmm. still probably would fight for it. 
Like if it was like a five hundred dollar retainer and they were like, We want that back or we're taking you to court, I would just say, Take me to court. Like I'm I have enough money in my bank account to where I'd be like, I'll spend twenty five grand just to prove that you're a jerk. Like I would I'm I'm the guy that would do that. Like I, which is, uh, and I don't want to like oh. flex or any, but that's, that would be like, if somebody was being awful and terrible and like, I'm going to run your name through the mud and defamation and all that, that at that point, I would just say, screw you. I'm not giving your money. Like you can take me to court for 500 bucks mm. or a thousand bucks or, um, and I know there are scenarios out there where people like, and I think it's so funny inside of Facebook groups where people are like, you should never do something or you should always do something. And they have these like finite things that they're telling business owners that they don't know, Mm -hmm. like how and why they should run their business. And so if you're in a position where you, you know, have a small retainer or something that you're and you're just dealing with this couple that is hell and they're like, I, I want our money back. I'm going to take you to court. You don't want to fight it. You don't want to mess with it. And you're going to spend hours and the the heart strength and the mind strength dealing with it. If $500 makes it go away, I mean, it might be something to where you have them s- sign something saying they're not going to ever tell anyone and they're going to, you know, like never write a bad review about you or whatever. And if they sign that agreement, you will release the money in 12 equal payments of $50, you know, or something like something just so it's a pain in their butt too. But Mm -hmm. uh, should you ever give back a retainer? I'm going to say that even after all of that, I don't, I don't, I don't think I, I would ever recommend anyone in any situation give back a retainer unless you're just, you're done and you can't deal with it. Yeah. Nick? I, I, I'm, I'm with you. Um, I don't, I don't think you should do it. Um, in, in most, you know, scenarios. Um, I think that the only time you would do it is if someone is just being awful and continuing to bug you. And it's not, you know, if it, if your retainer is $3,000, that's a different, that's a different conversation than if it's 500. Right. So I think the amount matters, um, you know, but we say not everyone, but we also say don't ever give discounts. And do we give discounts? Yeah, we do. Maybe not like an advertised, oh, guess what? I'm doing 10% off this month, you know, that kind of stuff. But if the right wedding comes along and it's something I really want to do, heck yeah, I'm going to give them a little bit of a discount so I can do that. So, you know, it, 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 for for someone to make a blanket statement, you should never do this. I'm with you. You should never do this. Um, what? What does your family need? What is your stress? Like you have to know yourself. Some people... Yeah can handle stress really, really well. And whenever someone kind of bullies them, they just give it right back. But if you cannot handle stress very well, and you know, I, I, maybe maybe that's a situation where you just look at that and say, okay, if these are the things that present themselves, <clears throat> you know, I'll do it. You know, I always, you know, I talked to my wife and um, we had a couple of of weddings that might, you know, we're going to cancel. And I said, I am going to write them back and tell them like our $8,500 wedding, they were paid in full. Our contract states all money given to us is ours. You don't get anything back. But I told Jen, I feel really bad taking $8,500 from someone whenever I literally did nothing. Okay, that was just me personally. And so I said, I'm going to tell her this situation, but I am willing to give her 50% back if, you know, she kind of come back and starts asking for it. Okay. But mm-hmm. never, you know, you have to make that up as, as your own decision for your own business and your own family and, and what you want to do. Um, I, it, it, I know that that's getting more, that's, that's more than just the retainer. Um, but I would never start out the conversation whenever someone's like, Oh, I canceled. And then you're just like, okay, well, I know you've paid me this much, but I'll give you the, like, don't just Mm -hmm. give away your money. Make sure that they are like work, like they're asking for it. Like if they're not asking for it, they might not expect it. I had one that, that she said, okay, I know that I've paid this money and I'm not getting it back. You know, what are our options? But if I would have said to her, oh, I'll give you this money back, then she would have been like, okay, when she wasn't expecting it. So it's definitely yeah. kind of a case by case situation, but very generally 95 plus <clears throat> more percent of the time, we're going to say retainers, absolutely not. 
So I have a couple of, I have two things. Number one, you need to contact your attorney and you need to talk to your attorney and make sure, you know, that you have a solid contract. Yes. Back, uh, about six years ago, I had somebody uh, paid in full and cancel and I had some kind of weird it was before I knew Paige and had hired another contract attorney. Some weird thing in the way I wrote the money that they were like, we want all of our money back. The groom was an attorney and like they were like, we want the whole thing back um, or something. And I was just like, ah, crap, you got me. I have to like and like I took that, you know, scar on my back for that wedding that was canceled. Um, and so you have to have a solid contract and you have to yes. talk to your attorney about what legally yes. in your state or your country, your province or wherever you're at, what legally rights you have. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. the other, the other point is you can't just be a pushover. Like you can't be a weenie when it comes to this, like this is I, your I, livelihood. I, yeah. And it, that's what, I mean, when it comes down to it, you can't be a weenie. Yeah. I, and, and I want to say that like you might not handle stress very well and, and maybe that's how you are. Um, but it, yes, on the, I, I was thinking about that point right there as I was saying that, that thing, you know, you need to have, if you, you need to write out, maybe here are the reasons why I might considering giving the retainer back and have those down. So, you know, that if you yeah. kind of have your business laws, your business guidelines, your business rules written out, it's a lot easier to follow the things that you say that you will never do or you will do in every situation if you have it written out and you know exactly what you need to do. So don't yeah. be a pushover, but in certain situations, giving a retainer back might not be the worst thing in the world and it definitely won't destroy the industry if one time you do it because of certain circumstances. Yeah, you just can't be doing it and just like, okay, cool, I'll give you all your money back. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's like, that's that not is, cool. That's that is cool. going to tear your business apart. And and I think that it kind of leads into the last part that I'd really want to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, just doing things that benefit you and your business and doing them now. I think, um, like we had mentioned, so many people are like, you shouldn't do this ever or you should do this always. And like it gets really, um, you know, it gets really shady whenever people are like this is how you should do things yes Nick whenever um I was listening to a marriage podcast one time with my wife Jen and the the people say the two worst words you can say in your marriage are never and always you never do the dishes you always leave your shoes all over the floor okay which not true. You're speaking in absolutes when it's not an absolute. So um, as one of the things that I have seen in lots of people, you should never give a benefit or, or a discount. You know, one of those things like, well, with the pandemic going on, should we offer our services at a discounted rate? And everyone's like, no, they should pay us more money because of all this stuff. And I'm thinking, okay, if you I mean, I don't disagree, but if you as a wedding videographer are hurting for money, you're not different than the rest of the country right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you're hurting for money, guess who else is probably hurting a little bit for money as well? That person that's hiring you, okay? Now, I'm not saying that you should start, you know, a campaign where you're giving, you know, you're discounting your prices by half and you're giving everything away. And that's not what I'm saying. But if you're having a tough time, paying your mortgage. If you're having a tough time getting your children food or, or that kind of stuff, if it's right for you and your business to do a little bit of a discount or take a little bit less money or maybe work more than you normally work on a wedding day, something like that, I don't think that that's a bad idea. No. And, and to be honest, the market will set itself. And I think mm -hmm. I'm a huge, I mean, I'm the guy that's always telling people to raise their prices. And, but like, I just booked a wedding, um, a 10 person wedding in June. Um, I'm going to shoot for six hours and I'm going to give them a five minute film mm. and I'm charging them 4,500 bucks. And I don't like, you know, w my wife and I have positioned ourselves with a an emergency fund and we have multiple streams of revenue outside of our video business and we're doing fine but even then i am like some of these weddings later in the year could cancel um it's rocky like it's rocky and so 
you know, this bride came to me. She was super sweet, and I don't like solo shooting. And she was just like, I'm having 10 people in my backyard. It's going to be six hours. We're not doing a first look. One location. We're, you know, mm. going to get ready, both of us at the house. Just going to be really simple. I just want a little highlight of it. Is that something you would do? And her heart was really sweet and she was really kind. And, you know, $4,500 is 2000 under my happy price for the year. Um, you know, 6500 though, is two shooters for eight hours and a longer film and aerial coverage and digital downloads and all this stuff. And so for me, it was <clears throat> technically like a discounted rate. But 4500 bucks is a happy price for me right now. Over the yeah. 6500 it was in January because stuff has changed. And so right. I gave a discount, kind of, but like I held true to the quality. Like that's way more expensive than – like that's actually a better rate for my hours than the 6500 oh, yeah. Definitely. And so, Definitely. you know. One, one thing I did is I booked this couple um, last week, I think, and they said – you know, I said my retainer is uh, fifteen hundred, and it was a sixty five hundred dollar package. And they said, "Hey, if we give you four thousand dollars today, will you knock five hundred dollars off of that?" Normal situation, I'd say, you know, I'm not really interested in that. Thank you, you know. But you know, today that payday today, absolutely. I was like, yes, yes, we we're gonna we're gonna take no off five hundred dollars, no question, yeah. because we needed that money. So so take the bookings if you need them. Get that cash flow where you need it, you need to be honest with yourself, right? Yep. You need to look at what matters to you, what is going to help you. Who cares what Nick is doing? Who cares what John is doing? If you are taking care of your family, if you are taking care of you and your business, do what you need to do. Now, don't be a jackball. Like, don't be a jerk. Don't, <laughs> don't, you know, don't be an idiot, you know, with, with how you're presenting yourself and how you're treating other vendors in, in your area, but do what you need to do so that you can take care of yourself. Can be honest with make yourself a graphic that, that just said, can someone make a graphic that says, don't be a jackball and it's just Nick's face or something going, <laughs> <laughs> can so, Nick make a face that we, someone can screenshot and yeah somebody make a graphic off that video right there that says don't be a jackball Nick we need Miller. we need to we need to be sure to timestamp Peter Aponte like yes. right there so he knows what we're talking about that is an easy transition to tell people they should sh they should subscribe to our YouTube channel if they're not over at how to film weddings um, Nick you know being honest with yourself though what you were saying whenever you you took me by surprise with your don't be a jackball <laughs> statement is like honest with me is like I'm okay if I don't get another booking this year. I'm fine if everybody cancels. Like I don't care. Like I've got enough to – do I want that to happen? Will it cost me no. six figures? Yes. <laughs> but, I, but you know, if, if you're getting on, in these groups and in our group or if you're listening to what Nick's saying or what I'm saying and you're just like, I want to impress them. I want to look good to them. I want to – I don't want to – man, this is a weird time. And you yeah. kind of get a pass on what's allowed and not allowed because when it comes down to it, going into debt right now or, you know, not knowing how you're going to make your – like, that's just silly talk. Yeah, you might have to do some work, like harder work than you planned on doing for less money than mm -hmm. you planned on getting and know that, like, there is the caveat of, like, I'm not doing this for more than four months. And, you know, if people want to try to take advantage of that, I wouldn't hook them up. But at the same time, if somebody's just – inquiring and you want the deal or, you know, but like creating ways to generate more revenue now, you know, cash is oxygen. And if you don't have mm -hmm. oxygen, you make bad decisions. And so yep. if you need the cash, just be honest with yourself. And so, yeah, there's, there's so many things that go along with that. And we will continue. I know Nick to, you know, shape the conversation. We don't think we know it all or that we're no. right. So, you know, if you have a beef with something we've said or if you don't understand it, leave it in the comments below because yeah, ultimately know. we're just two dudes running our business. And, you know, we know we have some influence out there with the thousands and thousands of you that are listening in now. But, you know, we hope our transparency isn't taken as we know it all. You should do it this way. You know, and so if there's something that we've said, we may not have mean, you know, like meant it that way or meaned it that way. <laughs> meaned it. it that way. Yeah. Mean it. Don't be a jackball. No, <laughs> but <laughs> I've never heard that. Um, but You've yeah, never I, heard I, that phrase? No, awesome. it, uh, it's a Kansas thing, I'm sure. But yeah, I mean, 
the point of all of this for us is like we do want to open up the conversation in a healthy, non-political way that is just what we should all be trying to do to lift each other up. And that's the point of How to Film Weddings. It's okay if you disagree with us about giving back a retainer. We just don't want you to be a jackball when it comes to your your disagreement with us. You know, we we like disagreeing and helping each other get better, but there's a way to do it in a respectful way. So in the comments below on YouTube or in the Facebook video or wherever you're watching, if you have a question or thought, we want to know it because we want to do more content like this that's just a little more raw. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, we had a couple of bullet points for notes, but it was just like, let's just have a conversation about COVID-19 and what's going on. So if there's something we missed, let us know in the comments below. I mean, it would be our honor to kind of really break down more things about this. Anything yeah. else, Nick? That you're no, about? no, I no, I, I I'm good. I'm really I really hope that you listening appreciated this comment or really appreciated listening to this podcast episode about running your company in a COVID-19 world or a post-COVID-19 world. Lots of stuff. We hope it was encouraging to you to hear that John and I are struggling, you know, with with certain things just like you are, but uh, we have our contracts in line. You know, we have kind of our goals where we want them to be. And, you know, we are uh, doing what, what we know will benefit us and our families and our businesses right now during all this time. So um, if you like this, if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, we want you to head over to howtofilmweddings.com. Check out our digital shop. Uh, We have some email templates there that will really help you run your business as you're interacting with clients and communicating with them. Again, subscribe to our channel, join our Facebook group if you want to. And until next time, we will see you. We'll see you guys. Have a good day.